Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 155. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. It's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. I know y'all. Life been life and shouts out to Nah. Shouts out to Mimi. Um, I left y'all for a minute without an episode, but I'm very active still over there at the page at I am Hype on Instagram and Twitter. But I know it's been a while. Appreciate the patience. Special guest in the building for episode 155. Bro, introduce yourself to the audience. Reintroduce yourself to the audience. What's up, everybody? John Watson, Sports for You, Sports for You Wrestling Podcast, fresh out of LA. Good to see my brother Hype once again at John Watson zero nine eight four on eight on X and Instagram. See a veteran of the episodes like John knows to come in throwing out his whole situation. He know I'm gonna say something because he gave y'all's whole government. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying he comes in, he gives y'all his location and all that, letting you know international, not just the hashtag as well. Now. Episode 155. This is a recap episode where we throw out several topics that we've done here on the Hot Podcast. Well, hey, we get the reaction of a guest. John, we're going to start off with this one. Episode 2. Times. This is funny because of the times that we're in right now. <laughs> what does the flag mean to you? That episode was featuring uh, my man, Beller. Shouts out to Beller the Great out there on the West Coast, too. What does the flag mean to you? Oh, man. Obviously, United States of America... Red, white, and blue. Obviously, it's supposed to symbolize patriotism, but I mean, it has it. It has its symbols for patriotism, but then obviously we got some people who want to use that as a martyr to try to push their own agenda. So when I think of the flag, I think of I do think of patriotism, but I do think of mixed messages as well. Copy that. I think it's complicated if I see the flag. If I see that you have a flag hanging from your house or from your car, I'm judging you. I'll just be honest with you that I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, I see it too. All the time out here. And especially, like I said, now, when we did this episode, this was four years ago, but <laughs> three years ago, but yeah, now, like, ooh, that's a crazy job. Man, um, Episode 15, Gym Segment Podcast. Shouts out to my ladies across the pond over there in the UK. You know what I'm saying? International hype, not just the hashtags. Man. Like, what's the hardest part of walking away from a relationship? Episode 15, that was. Wondering what's next. You can stay in a situation where, you know, you, you, you've been through a lot, even if it's had some bad times. You know what this person is. You know what you're dealing with. And you're scared to see what's behind that neck behind that door that you haven't opened yet so those is one thing that's really scares about being in a relationship is what's going to happen in the next one and are you overthinking thinking it's going to be the same or it's going to be better or it's going to be worse just overthinking the whole situation that's like the difference between comfortable and unsure i that's can right. be comfortable in this situation because we've been here forever if i we move we break up then who gets the big screen <laughs> Exactly. It's that good that mattress we spent all that bread on. Like those yeah. those type of small things matter, especially once you get to a certain age. And it's like, man, I need my thread counts to be right. Damn it, who gets the sheets? Hundred percent agree. Episode seventeen. Shouts out to Lee's Winnie, Baltimore. Uh, women proposing to men. How do you feel about women proposing to men, John? It's crazy. I just heard this the other day on the radio. Somebody, I think, because a video went viral about it. I mean, I'm old school. I always believe if you if a man should propose, that sh- that shows leadership. That shows, you know, you know, being a you know, showing you're a, that you're not just a leader of men, but you're a leader of, as a man, but a leader, leader of the household, of the head of the household. Um, a woman proposing to me, it's I mean, it's, I'm. To each his own, dude. I mean, I I wouldn't want my daughter to do that. I mean, if you got to try to put an ultimatum on a man to do something, then he's not worth it. He's, then, it's not, then he's not worth it. If you got to tell a woman to do something, she's not worth it. So I wouldn't do it. I think men should be the ones who get on that bending knee, put that ring on it. And it looks kind of 
a man doing it, it kind of looks kind of get receiving a ring from a woman, kind of looks kind of misogynistic, kind of you know, looking down on a woman in a way. I, I, I it's kind of uncomfortable for me. I got two follow ups on this one for you because you got a daughter, like I got daughters. Look at the lovely wristband. Where did you get that wristband? That's on your oh, own. Oh, this, uh, oh, how to, oh, this, uh, oh, this, uh, Oh, this um right here, this how to hustle with hype enterprise, how to hustle oh, enterprise. Yeah. Copy yeah. that. I'm saying, my guy, yeah. you're holding me, yeah. holding me down. I love to see it. Of course, <laughs> but of course, of course. I'm gonna give you a two part with this one because, like you said, I got daughters, you got a daughter. Um, if your daughter comes to you and says, "Hey, Dad, I really like Tim, and I feel like he's the one, but I feel like he's just like slow dragging with this situation, and I want to propose to him," what is your reaction to that? No, wait. If you don't propose to you. <laughs> Go find somebody else. No, don't 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 sell yourself short. If it's meant to be, it'll happen. If it's not meant to be, it's not gonna happen. If it's not meant to be, it's not gonna happen. You move on, you go on to the next chapter. But no, you're not don't sell yourself short. Um tell her that when she gets of age. My daughter is seven right now, she'll be eight on Thanksgiving. Don't sell yourself short. Copy that way, well, man. Happy birthday, happy early birthday from all of us over here at the Hot House Podcast, right? Thanks. Um because you know, yeah, you ate, you like, I ain't dealing with these situations no time soon. So now we're gonna flip yeah. that. So it was a two part. Yeah, now you and let's say you and Kathy been together for two years now, and things have you know progressed, and you feel like, man, it could be, it might be, but I still got a little due diligence I need to do. And she drops down on a kneecap in front of at the family reunion. <laughs> she says, She takes you by the hand and says, John. <laughs> Ever since the moment I laid eyes on you, I knew you was the one. <laughs> What's your reaction, bro? I'd be embarrassed as hell, number one. And two, I would be like, like I'd be saying in my mind, like, oh, no. Nah. And everybody's looking at me like, what you going to do? Oh, you niggas, gonna oh do? yeah. Niggas got their phones out. They done went live now. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, shit. This is going viral. This is going viral with the quickness. And I'm like, oh, boy. Um, I would try to ease the ease the situation. It'd be awkward as hell, but I would say, let's get up, let's walk, and let's talk. But I'm not I'm not accepting or anything like that because no, no. I mean, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I mean, I hate to make her look like a look stupid in front of in front of a bunch of family and friends, but no. And I'd be wondering who gave her that type of advice to tell her that was a good idea. Nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I, I would spare her the somewhat humiliation and pull her aside because I care about her her feelings and mental state at that time. So it's flat out. It's a flat out embarrassment for either one of us. If we propose, if you propose in front of people, and the other person, if we flip the script and it's you or me down on his kneecap, and she says like. Mm, ah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, uh, like it's already embarrassing now because you're down here on this kneecap and this has never been so long. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I got yeah. said on that episode, and like I still believe because, like I said, this was an episode from years ago, so this was early in the episodes, episode 17. Um, if I wanted to be married, I would be married, right. if I wanted to be engaged, I would be engaged. I would make that clear if I felt like okay, things are progressing, you like her. Things may lead this way, but please don't ever have it in your mind that you can get down on your knee and propose to me because all you can get is embarrassed. Even if I was about to do it and I felt like, yeah, I want to marry you, the fact that you just did this just means that you obviously don't know me too well and we have not clicked and connected like I thought we did. Maybe I need to reevaluate this situation because Thank that you. is a definitely, that's a definite hell no. Like we can't do that. And if my kids came to me with that situation, that's a definite hell no. And, right. and it, it, that don't even make sense. It don't even sound right. Like, what are you doing? People always these days, you know, gender roles is a problem. I'm very much into gender roles. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody has a spot on the team. Uh, we just do different jobs. We just have different roles. And that's perfectly fine. Some things are like the man might be better than or the woman might be better than because everybody's situation is different. If your woman is better at handling the money, then let her handle the money. If your mm-hmm. man is better at handling the money, let him handle the money. But I don't heard. feel like... Uh, she got to pay the bills because she's the woman or you got to pay the bills because you're the man. Like it's, who, who's better at these things in your relationship? It's all about your dynamic. But I yeah, you don't understand our dynamic if you think that you could propose to me. At the cookout, at the family reunion, uh, at the house, any of those situations.
All right, episode 19. Again, international hype. Uh, tough talk to Rano. Shouts out to my ladies out there. Uh, on the first date, what do you expect, John? Uh, episode 19, if I didn't say that. First date, you expect, obviously, you go to a nice place, good conversation, get to know the person, get to see, you know, is this something you want to keep pursuing or is this something that, you know, maybe you need to just evaluate your options. That when you go on the first day, you're not trying to get married on. Uh, you ain't trying to get married or move in on the first night at, off one nice dinner. You are trying to see what type of person this person is. Is this person just a friend or is it more than a friend? And that's how you should take it. Just one step at a time. You don't have to jump the gun and make make the person your significant other just because they ha- he took you to a nice steakhouse or something. I would say on the first date, I'm, I'm gonna say the nice restaurant has to happen at date two or four or three right. or something like. We we go too nice on the first one. What if I don't like you? Like, Good what point. if we just didn't click? What if the conversation really wasn't there? Like, it could have been. Some people are just nervous and don't know how to talk to somebody in person. We could have been clicking on the phone, or clicking on the DMs, or clicking on the text. But now that we're sitting here and it's like, you keep looking at your phone or you keep staring off in space. You're not making eye contact. We're not engaging in this conversation. Like things ain't just flowing. It's like, mm, I'm glad I didn't really go crazy with this joint. Cause like, like you said, you might just be, we might be cool as friends. We might not work as a couple. Like <laughs> some relationships is like that. But if we go too nice on the first date, it's like, ah, come on, what are we doing? <clears throat> right. On the first date, you kind of just really expecting to communicate and just click, see if we got something here. I'm not expecting to hit because if I hit on the first date, guess what? There'll never be a second date. We might talk again, but it's not going. We're not going out again. I might catch you if I happy hour. Right. We can slide for right. some wings, but <laughs> a whole full fledged date? Not with I. Not with me. I mean, you know, everybody do what they do. I'm saying everybody's situation is different, but <laughs> yeah, uh, first date it ain't gonna be too nice. It's gonna be something chain ish. I can tell you that. <laughs> Got you. All right, episode twenty. This is BTG again, but this is Bridging the Gap podcast. Shouts out to my guys. This is a Philly situation. Uh, uh, are men no longer up for the job? John, are men is, still up for the job? When we, what was the job we're talking about? The job of being the man. I mean, actually listening to some recent BTG, I believe this was like two weeks ago, where uh, Uncle Face on the Bridging the Gap podcast was saying, like, uh, this man shit is hard. Like we don't get enough credit. We don't get enough. Uh, <laughs> we don't get enough out of being the man type of situation. Now I'm going on with those guys pretty soon, so we'll be able to tackle that on their platform. But um, that was a conversation that they were just recently having, and this is an episode that we did, like I said, episode twenty a few years ago. So, John, do you think that men are still up for the job of being the man? Yeah, I am. I know I am. I mean, I have no choice. I mean, life, life, life wasn't meant to be easy. That was the case. If, if that was the case, we wouldn't have so many struggles. We wouldn't have so much sickness. We wouldn't have so much death. Life is going to be difficult, and being a man is still difficult. But yeah, you gotta want to be. You gotta people. If we're not up to being, being who we're supposed to be, which is leaders, head of households, obviously the patriarchs of our families, then what will the world be? We are much as we as much as we love women and women have a powerful voice and mothers they give us birth and they take care of the household they hold down everything else they we still need to have that strong male figure positive male role model influence to try to keep things afloat because if being a woman is difficult but being a man is difficult so don't. Say that oh, being a man, this man stuff is hard. I mean, if it wasn't if it was going, it was meant to be easy. Then it would be. Then we wouldn't be struggling so much. No, go Q, out. that's the clip that John just said right there. That's that last little run John just had. Q, let's make sure we clip that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, if it was supposed to be easy, we, 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 while we struck, we wouldn't. If it, if it was easy, then everybody perfect. could do it. That's- Exactly. If it was easy, everybody could do it. The whole di- the thing in the nutshell about being a man or being a woman that's fit for that job is that you got to understand that that's what you signed up for. Uh, you got to understand that nobody told you it was easy. Nobody told you that it wouldn't be difficult. Nobody told you that you wouldn't uh, feel like 
you're not being appreciated. But if you're in a situation where you're not feeling appreciated, then you need to be in a different situation. You need to get in. You need to not tie yourself into a situation. I'm not saying that this is what Face was saying for anybody who's going there. Um, because I know Face wife. But uh, if anybody is in a situation where you feel like you're not being appreciated or what you're doing is not valued or any of those type of things, then you've made a bad decision and you need to correct that situation. You need to reevaluate and see, is this the person that I want to be with? Is this the situation that I want to be in? Because if you're a man or a woman who's holding down your significant other doing the job that you've been given, then you should be getting all the kudos, love and respect for doing that. That is what a healthy relationship looks like. It is us appreciating that we both know that this ain't easy, that with the job that either one of us is doing, it's not easy for you to take on a whole nother human being. And then if y'all actually have kids and now we got a family where we put in two, three, four, five, six other people in front of us, uh, that's nobody told you, like I said, nobody said that was easy. Nobody said that that was something that everybody could do or signed up to do. And if you don't feel like you can do that, then you should not have kids, whether you're a man or a woman, because you got men and women in those situations. If you don't feel like you can put somebody else before you, then don't have kids. Bottom line. That's right. All right. Yeah. Episode 22. Shouts out to my man, Frank Styles, North Carolina. Uh, Carolina. What's wrong with you? Blank is wrong with you. John, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Oh, what's wrong with me? I mean, self evaluations are the most important evaluations. Uh, I sometimes I think something wrong with me is sometimes get caught up in trying to do everything, and you always you misstep to misstep. Sometimes you take a you take one step the wrong way, and obviously things go wrong. You can sometimes not being a little more attentive and paying attention and. Listen and, and consider it could be that something that's wrong with me. Sometimes just thinking everything is just fine and just going with the flow instead of just sometimes saying, "Hey, you need you you good? You need this?" Sometimes so being more attentive sometimes is something that's been wrong with me. Okay, like the answer. Now episode thirty nine, the next one. How do we support each other? Featuring my man CT. This was the most downloaded episode actually at the time. Paco has since passed him, but um, CT, my guy in the land out in the, out in the A, uh, had the number one episode for a very long time. So how do we support each other in our situations, John? If you just lean back, just a taste, give the camera a little shot right there of something maybe you might want people to support. Just to, just a taste right there. Yeah, of course. Slide, slide, the, slide, slide, slide the string, slide the string out of the way right there, so they can get a good clean shot right there. Go. <laughs> okay, here we go. Sports there for you, bro. We 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 got the hoodies, we got t shirts, this the logo. We got the new sports for you patches coming real soon. Tie that my kind of myself and my brother Mark, and on, at sports for you podcast, you want your merch, and we'll send it out to you asap and in a hurry. So size will get DMS for sizes and color availability. Copy that. So now, how do we support each other in our different endeavors and situations, John? Just, just, just lend out, just lend, out, just lend a helping hand. Someone told me a long time ago, support ain't, support don't cost. So just saying, no, you need help. You, we got you. Just a little, just a, you know, say something here, say something here, post here, post there. A recommendation here, a rec just a recommendation, just leaning, just making one, just reaching out, just doing the little things supports people. You don't have to be nothing major or extravagant. You don't got to be centered attention. You can be behind the scenes, just but always just by supporting by just, you know, doing the stuff that people don't want, that people don't have to see. It helps make a person feel better and makes them feel uplifted and knowing that they do got somebody in their corner that's helping them on this journey, even if they're struggling or things are just going well, no matter what the situation is. Just always just reaching out is the best way to support a person. The one thing that people always hear support and they think that that means like for me, you got to buy two jackets, four pairs of sneaks or any of that. A like is you supporting of of uh sharing the story is you supporting telling somebody when they say like hey i'm looking for this that or whatever and you know this other person is doing this you can't tell me i only wear sweatsuits and you don't have one of mine like because then we have an issue but 
you supporting somebody's situation is just reposting it. And like I said, it's just word of mouth. It's just you passing the message on. Maybe you don't have the money to support financially whatever the situation is, and that's perfectly fine. I tell people all the time, the price is the price. You can either afford it or you can't. You either want to pay it or you don't. But any wiggle room is now taking money out of my wife and my kids, and that's not what we do. But right. um, yeah, support is just simply you being there to support the situation, you helping it move forward, you helping it however it is that you can do that. Like I said, if you just liked it, if you just reposted, if you just shared it or you just told somebody, you have now supported my situation. <clears throat> so now, uh, get to know. Get to know is sponsored by one of my situations, Custom Hustle, at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom jerseys, jackets, sneakers, uh, sweatsuits, tracksuits, shorts, uh, collar shirts, barber capes, sunglasses, pocketbooks, you name it, we got it. And if you buy anything free with purchase, you will receive one of the How to Hustle Enterprise wristbands available in three different colors. I had this one on so long it ain't green no more. <laughs> <laughs> and actually the gray and black one, I, I lost that one at work. But, um, mm. but yeah, free with maybe purchase, we'll throw you a wristband in the bag. But that's, again, it's at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. And my bad, we have four versions of the sneaks and the CH5s will be available very soon. Now, John, uh, this is Get to Know John now. We'll throw a few things at you. Don't think too hard about them. Where's gotcha. your safe space? My room, my recliner. You, you, you give him, you're gonna go a little bit deeper, or that was right. it? Just okay, my, so my, room, my I, I have a, I have a recliner. <laughs> I bought a recliner years ago, I put it next to my bed because I always felt like if you stay, if you want to sometimes be in the same place, sometimes I don't like being in the lip, don't need to be in the living room or in the den or the kitchen. I be in my room, and I don't think being laying, being in bed is helpful physically or mentally it could be draining it can make you lazy so therefore i have a recliner that i have put next to my bed where i sit in it and that's where you know i get a lot of my peace and my peaceful time whether it's watching sports watching something on tv or just relaxing and easing my mind that is where i find my safe space just sitting in my chair and just let and just clear my head where it's just me, the Lord, and my thoughts. Copy that. There you go. All right. Now, because I know sports for you. I know you got the wrestling podcast. We're going to give you two tied into those situations. WCW or WWF? Okay. WC- which one are you going with? You going with, was you a WCW guy or were you a WWF guy? Oh, I, I, was, I was always a WWF guy. I mean, I, I was a fan of WCW, but I grew up on WWF. I didn't learn about WCW until... Hulk Hogan went to WCW. That's only that's how I learned about WCW. I wasn't watching it on Saturday. I wasn't watching it like growing up watching you Saturday. Six oh five Saturday night guy. Ooh. I wasn't at the time. I I grew into it because I grew into it. That's how I learned who Sting was. That's how I learned who the Four Horsemen were. Um, who Ric Flair was. I mean, go figure. But I didn't learn about it until I learned that Hulk Hogan was no longer in WWF. Then when he went over to WCW. But yeah, I, I grew up, I was always a WWF guy. I was WCW boy. My hey, uncle used to have that? my uncle used to have like the super the chip cable joint. He used to get all the pay-per-views just to record everything for me. Shout out to Uncle Book, man. Rest in peace, Uncle Book. Homie Richard. <laughs> Homie Richard, I went to middle school. His neighbor, his neighbor had the same hook, had the same hookup. So we used to get yeah. it, get all the pay-per-views. So shout out. Yeah, you get to school Monday. You're like, chill, don't tell me. I'm going to watch it when I get home. I got to get the tape <laughs> my uncle. I'll watch that joke. Exactly. Spoiler. <laughs> oh, all right. So now this is a, a sports one for you. Tennessee Vols or Denver Broncos? Oh, Broncos all day. That was the first football <laughs> I fell in love with. It's, I tell people this when it came to me choosing with the Broncos and Tennessee. I was a late bloomer in football. Obviously, I'm here in L.A. In 94, which was the year my grandfather passed, that was the year the Rams and the Raiders both left the NFL. Both left L.A. I'm about to say they didn't leave the NFL. <laughs> I was like, what the heck am I saying? When they left L.A. to move to St. Louis and move back to Oakland. So at that time, we went through this 22-year drought with no football team until the Rams re- re- returned back in 2016, and then the Chargers came the following year. Um but I became a Broncos fan because I used to play a lot with Matt, playing a lot of Madden on Sega. So Elway, John, Elway, 
Terrell Davis, Shannon Sharp, Rod Smith. Those are the guys. Matt McCaffrey. I, Matt McCaffrey, Flipper Anderson. Those are the guys I played with a lot. Um, and Terrell Davis came along after that. And Terrell I, Davis and, was, and Terrell, I, Terrell I Davis was like football. Uh, he was like football penny, man. <laughs> like, yeah, he was. I, 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 I get – anytime I see a, a, somebody try to, to chase down a, a tackle on an interception or a fumble recovery – I get nightmares because I think about that's that's, that, that's really much how what ended Terrell Davis's career. He tried to play a couple more years after that, but he just currently after that injury, it was over. Um, when it came to Tennessee, I mean, I used to watch, I always watched Rose Bowls, Sugar Bowls, Fiesta Bowls, and everything. And I watched in the nineties, you know, the Brass Good with Tommy Frazier and Lawrence Phillips. Even as much as I hate them now, Yo Florida Gators when they had Danny Warfel. Um, you mean the legendary was, Florida Gators of '96, the national champions? Is that what you were referring to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate those. Yeah, I hate those. Yeah, I hate those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peyton couldn't beat us. Peyton couldn't beat us. I'd be mad too. I, 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 ahead, I hate those ahead. dudes. But it was that '97 <laughs> Heisman race that got me in co into college football with Peyton Manning, Randy Charles Moss, Woodson. Woodson. Now, I really lean more towards Peyton than Charles Woodson, and I remember watching the Rose Bowl from my grandmother's hospital room in St. Francis Hospital here in L.A. When Charles Woodson, when Michigan beat Washington State and Ryan Leaf in the in the Rose Bowl to win the, win the share of the national championship. And part of me was thinking at that time, I wanted to be a, a missionary guy, but I didn't want to be on the bandwagon. So I ended up choosing Tennessee, even though obviously we didn't win the Natty that year, but we ended up winning the following year with T. Martin and Jamal Lewis and Carlos Price. Price. Yeah, so... That's how I became a Tennessee fan, and it kind of got re-engaged more so when I got out of high school because, obviously, me and Mark went to high school together. So I didn't know at that time he was a – he didn't become a Georgia fan really until after we got out of high school. So – and we all was trying to figure out who our teams was. We all knew – I always knew he liked the Bills, and I always knew – and he always knew that I liked the Broncos. So – but it was like – and one day, the homie Fat, who's a Bears fan, a Notre Dame, and a Florida State fan, asked me who's your college team. <laughs> Didn't really think about it. Like, you can't like hold up, Fat. You can't like Notre Dame and Florida State. All tell right. him that. Tell him that <laughs> next on Tuesday we get the comments. Um, so I, it was Tennessee because I didn't at that time because it was it was it was Tennessee and that's yeah, dark years. But I've been a Vols fan since I was since very I was, dark. Yes. It, it, it's been, it, it was midnight out there for the Tennessee fans. For very, very, very so, time. very so. With without Eric Berry, boy, who man? My guy, my guy. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, hey, fact, come on, man. You gotta like, you gotta like Florida State and Tulsa or something. Like, you can't go no, you can't go two power teams. Like, come on, man. Yo, tell him, tell him that, dog. You, you, you see, fat on the comments. <laughs> you know, fat man. He, 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 as long as I've known him, he's been. Notre Dame and Florida State. And I was, I mean, we always try to figure out what does he do when Florida State plays Notre Dame's. That's and what I'm saying. Like, he always the only said conflict he that you can have right now is like in Colorado. That's for the culture. It's Dion. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? <laughs> Nobody's right. mad at you for, for Colorado right now. Yeah. And they're on their way to the Big 12 championship. And, um, Happy that. they, um, but yeah, if I, yeah, but he say his Notre Dame is always number one. But he, he, but for some reason, he likes Florida State for some odd reason. My yeah, brother like Florida State. They are horrible this year. It is beautiful. Now we're gonna dive into the last. Uh, we're gonna dive into the last segment of the show. This one is sponsored by H two H Cleaning. That is at H two H Cleaning on Instagram only. We do roof and plumbing, flooring, HVAC cleanups, cleanouts, remodeling, tree trimming, grass cutting, whatever you need. We're making it happen over there at H two H Cleaning. We're here to help. Just tell us how we can help. Um. Now, John, this is the last one. What do we need to know? This is the floor is yours. You tell us all about what it is that we need to know. You had what I need to know is that sports for you is the number one sports podcast in the world. And we're out and y'all need to come check us out every Tuesday and Friday, 645 Pacific, 945 Eastern, 845 Central. Myself, Mark, Nick Freeze, we're giving you sports takes with West Coast flavor. And then on Wednesday, the newest up and coming wrestling podcast in the world, sports for you wrestling, myself. My brother Trail every Wednesday nights, 10 15 Eastern, 7 15 Pacific, bring you a week of review of wrestling where it's WWE, AEW, a little bit of TNA here. And uh, we're obviously just, we're seven episodes in there. We're over 300 episodes in on Sports for You. We're approaching episode 350. 
So it's been monumental this four year run we've been on and we got the new merch coming through. But last night had to watch along last night for Tyson Jake Paul. I want to shout out podcast link Philly being represented. Our girl, your girl Taya was in the building during the main event. And um, what Johnny knows that sports for you is more than just a podcast. It's a brand. It's a movement. We're just, we, we talk sports, we talk wrestling, but we're family. And clearly last night when we do a watch along, there's nothing like a sports for you watch along because with the, just how the awfulness of the Tyson Jake Paul fight, we still made it entertaining for our, for those who were watching on Twitter, YouTube, or on, on Facebook. Because Tell I, them where to follow y'all at. At Sports for You Podcast. That's Sports, the number four, and the letter U Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And follow Sports for You Wrestling at S4U Wrestling on Twitter and on you and subscribe on YouTube and subscribe to Sports View Podcast on YouTube. Copy that. Shouts out to my guys too, Nine Nine Gorilla and my guy Mark. But they couldn't make it today, but you know we still gonna make it happen with those guys. I got a topic sitting there waiting for y'all, locked and loaded. John, awesome. appreciate you coming on, bro. That's episode one fifty five. We are out. I am hype. That's H Y M P E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up.